So for these last 20 years, our main objectives have been the trying to achieve a simple and cost-effective procedure uh, for providing fixed teeth to edentulous patients. Uh, also, we would like those fixed teeth to be placed immediately in the time of the surgery. And, of course, with high success rates, both for the implants and also for the prosthodontics uh, rehabilitation. And we have succeeded with two different uh, protocols. The first one was the all on four protocol, and it's a surgical protocol uh, which uh, allow us with four implants only to achieve uh, the correct support for our bridges. And then the Malloc Clinic bridge that is being developed um, especially for the all on four uh, surgical protocol and will allow the patient to have the fixed teeth with highly statical and functional capabilities. This is a, a clinical case of uh, one of my patients. Uh, we have some wear in the acrylic teeth. They are in contact with opposing ceramic, so it's normal that they have some, some kind of wear. There's also some staining around uh, the transition of the crowns with the pink acrylic, but I think after 12 years we have uh, a good result. But unfortunately not all the cases are like this and we also have this type of situations, especially when we have patients that are heavy uh, bruxers that have perifunctional uh, habits. And as you can see, there's a huge uh, problems here. We have the bonding of one crown, fracture uh, of the pink material, and even in the metal acrylic lower bridge, we had um, some acrylic teeth that just break in half. So this is a sign that this patient is causing incredible pressions in, in, these, um, in these bridges. So, uh, we also have fractures for the ceramic. In the worst scenario, we can have even fractures of the titanium framework. Of course, these fractures, they usually come in the uh, more um, subject to load areas, like the posterior cylinders and the cantilevers. So our challenge was um, to replace the titanium infrastructures, very rigid, by pink, peak infrastructures. And uh, with the resilience that the peak material has to see if we can uh, absorb some of the loads that are causing damage to the crowns and to the, uh, the veneering materials. So first, uh, we did a pilot study with only um, one patient, with uh, four patients, uh, with four, uh, five prostheses. And one of the mechanical complications that we saw happening in these five prostheses was the strangulation of the peak um, material when we torque the prosthetic screw. Uh, this is what we start seeing in those situations and we had to find a solution to this before we start our, uh, our study. So the solution that we find was to include these titanium sleeves that are placed uh, from occlusal and where the prosthetic screw will tighten. So we are not causing pressure on the peak material but instead of on the titanium sleeve. Uh, and we incorporate these titanium sleeves for every bridges that we did uh, from this point. So, you can see on the other side that even we had the peak material in contact with the platform of the abutment, the, the top of the abutment will contact the, the titanium sleeve. So this has been the, our clinical protocol that we followed. Uh, and I will use this case to illustrate you what we have been doing with these patients. 
We have uh, this very nice lady, uh, almost edentulous in the upper and in the lower. She was using removable uh, appliances and you can see that of course this is uh, a case to extract the remaining teeth and plan the implant the implants and it was what we did. We did an all on four in the upper and in the lower and these are the full acrylic provisionals that we immediately deliver to the patients in the surgery, surgery day. Uh, you see the stitches still here. And this acrylic, of course, is uh, a huge breakthrough for our patients because they start immediately with a much, a much more comfortable um, uh, situation. After the healing phase, and we waited between four and six months, uh, according to the, uh, the type of bone that uh, the patient uh, had, we started by doing our uh, definitive impressions. And when using CAD CAM techniques, we tried always to have as precise models as we can. So what we do, we, we use this feralized um, technique for the impression copings to try to have the more precise model that we possibly can. And this is the starting for uh, the starting point for every case, the final models. Uh, by using the immediate provisionals, we will cross uh, the models, the final, the master casts with the models of the provisionals and try to have as much references as possible for uh, the technicians to start uh, building the new uh, and final bridges. So we can remove these models, make these silicone indexes, or we can, of course, now with the digital process, we can scan the provisionals um, so we can have the design entirely made by CAD but we can also use a more manual approach and with these silicone indexes we can design the, the, the peak infrastructures. This is an example of the CAD design uh, for this case and after designing upper and lower we had them milled. Uh, they are milled from peak discs and of course they need to have a slightly different design to incorporate these titanium sleeves. So this is the upper framework, the lower, and in an occlusal view, upper and lower. This will be now veneered with uh, acrylic teeth and with pink uh, acrylic, exactly like we were doing with the titanium bars. But instead of titanium, now we have pick. And this is the lower prosthesis. And here we have the case uh, finished with a very happy patient with their uh, new upper and lower pick infrastructure covered with uh, acrylic. Of course, statistically speaking, uh, we don't see any difference from this uh, situation for the titanium bars. Uh, I think the, the improvements that we might have will be functional, not uh, static, of course. And here, uh, with the provisional uh, material closing the excess uh, of the prosthetic screws. And here in the X-ray, in the panoramic X-ray, you can see it's of course a different image from when we have titanium bars. Uh, we can see the peak infrastructure here and the titanium sleeves in contact with the top of the abutments. So this was the protocol that we used for this ongoing study that we have. Uh, the results that uh, I'm going to show are from one year follow-up. Uh, for this study, we had 37 patients, which meant 49 prostheses, because some of the cases were upper and lower, were bimaxillary cases. We studied uh, 
two essential outcomes. The primary was the prosthetic survival, meaning that we uh, went to see if all the prostheses uh, had survived or if some had to be replaced. And also extremely important, the secondary outcome measures in which we uh, did uh, check the implant survival and we uh, tried to, uh, to find technical uh, complications, mechanical complications and biological. Regarding the prosthetic survival, uh, we had one prosthesis that had to be replaced due to a, a fissure that came in, uh, in the cylinder area. Uh, it was on the 35 on the left side. Uh, this meant that we have a 98% of uh, survival for the prosthesis. Regarding the secondary measures, we had some technical complications and of course I w at least I was expecting them because when we change the materials, we change the techniques, there's also a learning curve uh, and we had to go through that learning curve. The more evident technical complication that we had was the veneer adhesion issues. Uh, and we had this coming in six patients uh, with seven prostheses affected. This meant that we had a, a debonding of our pink acrylic and from the uh, acrylic teeth from the pink, pink infrastructure. Uh, and we uh, did three uh, things to change and to, to obtain better results. The first and the more important was to change the bonding primer. Uh, we were using one primer and clearly when we replaced, and my colleague uh, Mr. Antonio Silva will uh, address that, when we change we immediately stopped having this kind of problems. Uh, another measure that we took was to increase the mechanical retentions, uh, to have more retention on the peak material to, uh, to increase the adhesion. And also we increased the peak thickness. And why did we do this? We did this to uh, reduce the flexibility of the material and to make it more um, uh, more according to the, the, the acrylic that we were using. So this is an example of the veneer adhesion problems that we had. See, all this pink acrylic and these acrylic teeth just separate from the infrastructure. Regarding the um, mechanical complications, uh, we had acrylic fractures, meaning that we had the acrylic teeth fracturing, uh, not exposing the infrastructure. So it's a different situation from the, um, uh, the previous one. And this happened exactly in the patient that uh, had the fissure on the, pink, on the peak infrastructure. And uh, that patient, for it's my uncle, so I'm sorry to brought him to the study. <laughs> Um, and here our solution was to uh, improve the design, to change a little the design, to increase the thickness of the peak and, and give it more uh, resistance. And the other problem that we saw, that sometimes happens also with the titanium frameworks, was the loosening uh, end or fracture of the prosthetic screws. And we had that in two patients uh, and in three prostheses. And here we controlled the occlusion, we changed the screws, we retightened, and we uh, never saw this happening again in the, the remaining time of observation. So here you can see that in some areas, especially the areas where we have the cantilevers, we need to increase the thickness of the, the, the peak to gain more resistance in this area. Regarding the biological complications, uh, they were not really complications. Uh, we had excellent biological results. 
Um, the bone loss, as you can see, in the axial implants were 0 0.5 ranging to 1.13 uh, millimeters, and for the tilted implants, 0 0.43 uh, ranging to 1.14. Uh, these are very good uh, values. They are even slightly lower than what we can see in the literature, although it's not really um, clinically, statistically significant. So uh, it's something that we really uh, enjoy to see because the bone is responding really well to this, uh, to this uh, type of material. And the other thing that we also uh, wanted to test PIC was regarding the, um, the opportunity for using different veneering materials. And we use these tests also to try different solutions. Uh, and in this clinical case, you can see here the post-op um, orthopentomography of a patient that did an upper all on four. You can see the immediate bridge still with the sutures. Uh, we included also this patient in the study. And here we did a different approach. Instead of having the peak infrastructure completely covered with uh, acrylic, we tried to make to made a mixture between a full contour bridge with only a veneering in the labial sides. So you see here the wax up from which was obtained the peak infrastructure. Then, by the use of these silicone indexes, we did a cutback on the buckle of the peak framework, and we veneered the labial with composite resin. Okay? And, of course, in the gengiva area, we use the same pink acrylic. And the main advantage of this situation is that in the occlusal is peak. It's not uh, veneering material. So we want to see how this material will uh, function in the occlusion with the antagonist natural teeth. From this, the aesthetic point, uh, there's, it was a very good result. I was impressed with it. Here you can see the x-ray, we can see the peak and the resin showing uh, in, this, uh, in, in the places where it's more thick. And here it is the intraoral situation for, for this clinical case. And this is the last case that I will show. Um, it's also a case in which we change the common acrylic veneering material and we used ceramic. Uh, also a patient almost edentulous in the upper jaw and with a natural dentition in the lower. So here we wanted uh, not only aesthetic, but something that was more compatible with the wear of the, um, the natural enamel. So this is the design of the peak framework. Uh, it's a completely different design from those that we want to wrap around with acrylic. It has preparations where the individual crowns will fit. As you can see here, we already have the Emax individual grounds and the peak infrastructure. And on the right, you see the individual grounds already in place. These grounds, they are bonded, so we need to uh, prepare the peak surface and also the internal uh, side of the grounds uh, so we can bond and have um, like a monoblock uh, effect between the crowns and the infrastructures. I think it 
would be impossible to veneer with ceramic or to bond bridges uh, because as the pick has some flexibility, it would break the ceramic. But with individual crowns, they can move freely um, and can accommodate the peak flexibility. And this is the case finished. And here you can see the ceramic Emax crowns bonded. Of course, this acrylic is, um, is over the crowns and we try to have the best interface between the pink acrylic and the ceramic as possible. So for this one year um, results, I think we are very happy with the pink uh, performance, with the peak performance that uh, we have seen. Also regarding the patient's satisfaction, um, their opinion has been extremely, extremely uh, good. They feel very comfortable and for the time being I think that uh, of course we need to to have more time to see more complications and probably change some uh, procedures and some techniques uh, but I'm, I hope that in uh, four years we can come to show our uh, five-year results and with very good results because I think this is really a, a very good material for this type of use at least. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.